best defense is the attack. We are in a special warfare, brothers and sisters. There is this tremendous worldwide oppression because of these horrible things they're doing. They are doing. No God, don't, don't come around. God is sending uh, COVID, you know. Oh, now we're going to pray so we send the COVID away. We, we have no power whatsoever to do this. All right? And God is not doing this because we are in the dispensation of the grace of God. And God is dispensing grace. And so, sending a virus that, uh, you know, uh, oppresses people or brings lockdown and vaccination is not the work of God. Unless you confuse the true living God, in which we believe it, that is in the Bible with the God of this world, which is Satan. Well, in that case, yeah, it could be the work of Satan and his servants. But the best defense is the attack. And I want to defend my spiritual health, so to say, and my mental sanity. Not reading anymore uh, all these videos or watching the TV, rather reading the Word of God. Because I live and you live already in heavenly places. Our conversation is in heaven. So we go to the book of Ephesians. Where the Apostle Paul writes, Ephesians 1 1. Ciao, brother. Yes, he said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So now, some people make a distinction. Personally, I can't see any distinction because if you're a saint, you are faithful because you have the faith. Of Christ knew, which is the gospel of the grace of God, you have this faith in what Christ has accomplished, and you are a saint because having believed in this glorious gospel of the grace of God in Christ, you are set apart. That's what it means. Doesn't mean that you go around with light shining from your head or that you are just perfect, infallible, and you know, ways, you know, it means that you belong to the Lord. So, our Apostle, Apostle Paul, is the Apostle preacher and teacher of the Gentiles. He defines him as if an Apostle of Jesus Christ, because in this, the dispensation of the grace of God, there are new Apostles. There is Paul, and then there is with him now the new ones that God is raising, also through the ministry of Paul, Timoleo, or Timothy, if you want to call him like that, Silvanus or Silas, which I think would be the same, Barnabas and Titus and so forth. So Paul is an apostle of Jesus Christ. <laughs> now the Lord Jesus Christ is the most important person in this life and for eternity because he's the God man. In Jesus Christ you have the God man. You have man and God are the same person. That's amazing. Only God could do this. And so he's writing to the saints, the believer at Ephesus. Now, you know that in the book of Revelation, there is a church of Ephesus, but that's not the same church to which Paul writes. This is a grace church, not a kingdom gospel church like the church in Ephesus in the book of Revelation. Don't get confused. You need to learn how to rightly divide, how to study the word of truth, rightly dividing it. Okay, it's a grace be to you. And peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is absolutely wonderful. He doesn't say uh, curses, wrath, eh, eh, war, uh, you know, from heaven or against you sinners. No, he says grace <laughs> be to you and peace. Now the grace and peace is a, is a, a duo together, you know, because once you receive the grace of God, you find out that also you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, justified by faith. That's uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Justified by faith, we have peace with God through, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, God has given us now grace, and this is eternal. Praise God. We are in the dispensation of the grace of God. Praise God means eternally under grace. The body of Christ is under grace. Don't let anyone 
anyone, anywhere, put you under the covenants, put you under the law, because that would be going against the will of God. Romans 6 tells you very clearly that we are under grace. I'll go there because I don't want you that you think that I make up this. You know? Praise God. Mm. For uh, Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Sometimes I wonder, I ask myself, how many times the God has got to repeat something until eventually I get it. <laughs> but you know, once the Lord says something once, that would be enough. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Praise God. As I said before, therefore, therefore being justified by faith, chapter 5, verse 1, where peace we go through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope for the glory of God. In the book of Ephesians that we are looking together now, because that's what we're doing, Paul asks in chapter 3, in verse 1 and 2, he says, For this cause I pour the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard, what? Of the dispensation of the grace of God, which has given me to your word. Now, let me ask you. Let's talk in total, uh, fr you know, frankly, friendly. How many churches, denominations, you, you really believe this? That we are in the dispensation of the grace of God. That the body of Christ, not, the, not Israel, we're not Israel. That the body of Christ is under grace. Very few. Very few. They all want you to put you under some kind of rituals, laws, commandments. Killing you. i tell you why they kill you. Because the law always will condemn you. When I say you, me. The law has been given so, that for the, so we have the knowledge of sin. The law is perfect. It's holy and righteous. No problem. But God gave it the law so that men understand that he cannot, man cannot keep the law of God because the law is spiritual. We are carnal. So we find ourselves always missing, always in a situation where we come short to the glory of God, because all the sinners come short to the glory of God, and we're in, in dire straits if we remain in that condition. That's why God mercifully, graciously, gives us what? Grace. And we are in the dispensation of grace. We are under grace. Grace reigns. We walk by faith in what is written in the Word of God, and we say bye-bye to religion. I am not interested in any form of religion or religiosity. I know that in my flesh it was no good thing, Paul says. Do you know? Do you still trust yourself that you're going to do the will of God because you pray, because you read the Bible? Don't do that. Trust on, on the finished work of Christ. By the cross of Christ, by His death on, on that cross, we are forgiven. We are saved. We are sealed. Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried and he rose again. Third day, according to the scriptures. So Christ was sacrificed. He offered himself. He gave himself to deliver us from this present evil world. So these were only just some considerations on the first two verses of the fantastic, glorious book, the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 1.3, at this point, the attention of our apostle goes directly to the Lord. They say, Bless be, bless be, bless be who? The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who is giving us grace. You see, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And now he says, verse 3 of chapter 1 of Ephesians, Bless be. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we bless God? Yes, we can. We can say, 
Lord, you are blessed because you blessed me. I don't deserve your blessings, but you have blessed me. Because it says here, who has blessed us. This is a past tense operation. The done deal. With what? Oh, Chabatista. Oh, spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I really hope that we can see the difference between earthly and heavenly. Israel. All the, the blessings to Israel were earthly, earthly, earthly blessings. If they will be obedient to the covenant, to the law, to the covenants, they will be blessed. Go and read the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 28. I'll go very quickly there. Actually, I'll go through this. It's, it's easier. Huh? Deuteronomy, which will be the second time the Lord is given, 28. And it shall come to pass, verse 1, that if thou shalt hearken diligently, not just like this, diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do works, you see, all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So, the blessings of Israel, all earthly, hmm? the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Blessed, be, shall, blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy... This is all earthly stuff and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou come in, and blessed shall thou be. So, many churches, you know, crafty they are. They preach this and say, oh, if you obey, you're going to be blessed. But then, they don't go at that part. <laughs> Because until, until verse 13, there are blessing and blessing and blessing, earthly blessing. But then when you start from verse 14, it says in 20, Deuteronomy 28, 14, And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I commanded this day. This day. To the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve him. But if it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And now is the list of three pages of curses. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy soul. So all the blessings are reversed and become curses and curses and curses. It goes on and on. So typically, the story is very simple. If you be good, you're going to be blessed. If you are not good in anything, you're going to be cursed. Guess what? There is not one man or a woman on the face of the earth who will be able to obey this law. The law is not only ten commandments, dear, my, dear friends. The law is 613 points beside the ten commandments. Only one man who happens to be God at the same time walked this earth obeying from the inside, from the heart, the law. Who is that person? The Lord Jesus Christ. Now you and I, as much as they want to say, you know, you are a child of God, like uh, we are little gods, they say. No, we are not little gods. <laughs> we can't be Jesus. Oh, let's be in the imitation, imitation of Jesus. You're crazy or something. 
Jesus was without sin. He was born without sin. He is born of God by the, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Conce he is the Immaculate Conception. Not Mary. Jesus Christ is the Immaculate Conception. It means Immaculate in Latin. It means blot. The blot of sin. The curse. Christ is the name because the Holy Spirit conceived Christ in the Virgin. The Virgin was Virgin. Fulfilling Genesis 3, 15 and Isaiah 7, 14. Okay? But the Christ was God in the flesh. The true man, true God. And he who knew no sin because he, he was sinless, innocent, holy, righteous. He was made sin for us, Jesus said. Uh, God says, you know, Holy Ghost says, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 21. God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we, the sinners, may be made the righteousness of God in him. This is wonderful. This is glorious. That's why Paul, the Apostle Paul, who was the enemy, Saul of Tarsus, and now has become the Apostle, preacher, teacher, because Christ saved him. In Acts 9, on the way to Damascus, he saved him in a glorious way and then made of him the apostle, preacher, the teacher of the Gentiles, the chosen vessel. He realizes this glorious grace and he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, the body of Christ, the new creature, the believers in the death, burial, resurrection, with all spiritual blessings. It's plural. It's not only one blessing. Blessings. 120. In heavenly places in Christ. Down here, it gets tough as nails. Down here, there are no promises that you're not, get going, you're not going to get sick or that everything is going to go absolutely wonderful, precious, and what, you know. But all your spiritual blessings are in heavenly places in Christ. You are in Christ. A Christ is in you. That's the greatest blessing of all. Your life is it with Christ in God. When Christ was, who is our life shall appear, then shall we also appear with Him in glory. Verse 4, Ephesians 1. According as He had chosen us in Him, before the foundation of the world. Okay. Before you think I'm a Calvinist or I subscribe to anything, you know, predestination of the Calvinist uh, cult and sect, forget it. He's talking about the body of Christ in Him. The body of Christ, Christ is the elect, the predestinated, and we become part of it by believing. Before the foundation of the world means this is the mystery that was hidden in God. Nobody knew. But then is revealed to Paul and to the new apostles. Peter didn't know anything about this. No James, no John. Elijah didn't know anything. Moses didn't know. Daniel didn't know. Isaiah didn't know. Why? Because they were stupid? No way. They were against... No way. They were obedient in whatever God told them to do. To whatever God gave them. But this was a mystery hidden in God. And God has decided to reveal it after... You know, Israel has rejected completely the King Jesus and the Messiah King, the, the High Priest of Israel. They reject the King in the Kingdom. Israel fallen, blind, unsaved. Because of their fall, salvation came to the Gentiles. And Jesus Christ came from heaven and met his enemy number one Saul on the way to Damascus and made of him this apostle. And gave to him the revelation of the mystery. How do we preach Christ now? How should everyone who calls himself a believer, how should we preach? According to the red letters, no. We can learn. Or whatever is written a fourth time is for our learning, the Apostle Paul says. But we should preach Christ in this way. Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you, according to my gospel, this is not gospel. The gospel, my gospel, is not the gospel of Peter or James and John. It's not even the gospel that Jesus was preaching to Israel. I hope it is clear. 
This is a, a new gospel because we have a new apostle, the apostle Paul, a new dispensation, the dispensation of the grace of God, a new gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20, 24, and first Roma, first, uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I'm not ashamed that the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation, to for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, we preach Christ according to, now to imitate the of power to establish according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. God kept secret that he was going to save unworthy, ungodly sinners, enemies of God, like me and you, by the death and resurrection of Christ. Satan didn't know this, it was a mystery. That's why God kept as a mystery, because if Satan and his devils would have known, they would not have killed, they have not crucified the, the, the Lord of glory. But the wisdom of God, Satan is a fallen cherub. He knew every, everything concerning prophecies, prophecy, and that's why, you know, attacks, you know, the, the little flock attacks Israel and so forth, but he didn't know about the mystery. This was a secret hidden God, but now it's revealed, you see? But it's now made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise. That's why Paul says, to God only wise, because this is the wisdom of God. In First Corinthians, it talks about, you know, it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Does not God make foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Not them that get water baptism. Not get they confess their sins and, and pay tithes and go to church to fill the the, you know, the, the room, and sing song, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? God is interested in the salvation of your soul. The will of God in this, the dispensation, the grace of God, it will level all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And you get saved by believing the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of, the, of Christ, of the cross. For the Jews require a sign, says, says writes Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, from verse 20, for the Jews that require a sign, give us a sign, give us a sign, you know, want to see a miracle. Even now, many people say, if I don't see a miracle, don't believe. Yeah, go away. Seeing is not believing. You believe what God has done, and then you are saved. And the Greek seeks up the, after wisdom, philosophy, blah, 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 blah. They fill the, the head, the, your head, with all these big words, like the politicians, like the the world of finance, like the world of religion. They go there behind this pulpit, they talk and talk and say nothing. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks a foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Our Lord is so immensely wise. You can see his wisdom and power and glory in creation, even though this creation has fallen from the initial creation because it went through the flood and everything. God is so powerful. He's so glorious in creation. Imagine in salvation. They can take a sinner dead in trespasses and sins and quicken you and save you and make of you a member of the body of Christ, the new creature, having had as the head is Jesus Christ the Lord, not the Pope in Rome or the pastor in your church, or me, forget it. The Lord Jesus Christ is the head, we are the body, members in particular. Bones of his bones, flesh of his flesh, and members one of another. We are on the same ground with the glorious God that directs us through the letters of Paul. 
through the word. God can speak to you millions of times a day if you read and study and meditate this word and you understand it. You say, Lord, I want to understand. I want to understand how I'm saved and how you keep me saved because salvation is glorious not only because it saves you, but it keeps you safe to the end. The persevere to the end is given to Israel in the great tribulation. That's not for us. Praise God, we are saved and sealed by grace. So he says, having according as chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Can you imagine this? Being holy and without blame in, before him in love. You are there in the presence of Almighty God, this glorious God, this most holy God, righteous, holy, faithful, pure, glorious, and you, me, which in ourselves are very, very little people, standing before Him in love, holy and without blame. It's wonderful. You can see also this in Romans 8, 28 and 30. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, I love this. It's not a question somebody forced God and say, oh, you got to do it. It's the good pleasure of His will to make us adopted children by Jesus Christ. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He has made us accepted in the beloved. Now, understand, brothers and sisters, you are accepted, I am accepted. Anyone who believes this gospel of grace is accepted. Welcome, so to say. Yeah, accepted in the beloved. Who is the beloved? Beloved, Jesus Christ. And verse 7, and I stop with this. Seven verses is more than enough today. In whom the beloved, we, the body of Christ, every single believer in the body, have redemption. We've been bought back. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Grace and peace to all. Thank you for listening. <music>